Hello pandas and other scrap enthusiasts. I thought it'd be helpful to make a quick video explaining what is the difference between copper number one and number two copper. I know it seems like it would be simple, and it is, but it can get confusing and that's because there's actually three different types of number one and number two copper. And of course I've got plenty of examples to help explain the difference, but copper comes in many different shapes and sizes, so I think it's more important to first explain what those terms actually mean. See, number one and number two copper are scrap metal terms that refer to the total percentage of the weight that the refiner is going to be able to recover as their copper product. Explaining it specifically like that will make sense in a second, but for the most part they're both just copper, but number two copper has other contaminants on it like glue, paint, um, lacquer, uh, putty, solder, that kind of stuff, which contributes to the total weight. Now, for our examples, over here we have number one copper pipe. Might be a little old and a little grimy, but it doesn't have any other solder, it doesn't have any stickers or paint or anything, it's just copper. Whereas this bin is number two copper pipe, etc. So the pipes have some paint and some solder on them, and the other pieces, although they're copper, they have silver plating on them, or maybe some paint, and that sort of stuff. So in this way, it's still pretty much pure copper, but those other contaminants bring the grade down a little. Now that all makes perfect sense. What's so confusing about that? Well, the wire is the part that took me a minute to understand. And really, that's just because nobody actually explained to me why, so that's why I'm making this video. There's a lot of different kinds of wire. We got BX cable, we got Lumex cable, we got paper wrapped Lumex, and there's plenty more, but we're not gonna focus on those. For insulated wire, number one and number two, these are all number one, and these are all number two, which at a glance might leave you wondering, well, how does that make any sense at all? They're all pretty much the same sizes. It's not big or small. Well. If you look closely, you'll see that number one insulated copper wire, they're all solid core, or at least thick pieces of copper all wrapped up together. Whereas the number two stuff, you can see it's all super fine braided copper, kind of like little bits of copper hair all wrapped up together. And even this big thick one is just little chunks of super fine copper wire. Now why does that matter? Well. It's because that super fine stuff, when you go to refine it, copper will oxidize. So parts of it will burn away. And the greater the surface area, the more amount is going to be lost when you put heat to it to refine it down. So that super fine stuff, they're going to lose a lot more of that when they go to melt it down. Whereas these thicker pieces, and I don't mean the gauge of the wire, I mean the thickness of the actual material inside, you're not going to lose as much there. And that's why I wanted to do a video explaining it. It's not the size, and it's not the cleanliness, it's the recovery percentage. Now this is of course a basic generalization, because if you have a whole bunch of this stuff, I'm sure your scrapyard will have a higher grade that they can give you than just regular plain old number two. Whereas this stuff here, uh, maybe your scrapyard doesn't want to call that number one. So that is kind of subjective. But if you want an easy way to tell, just take a piece of wire and bend it. If it holds that bend strong without trying to like return, then it's probably thick enough gauge to be number one. But no matter how nice it looks inside, if you give it a bend and it just starts squeaking back, it's probably number two. Now you may have noticed this little silver piece of stranded core was silver on the inside, not copper. Well, it's actually tinned copper. The ends show that it is copper wire, but it's got that tin coating. I think that's for corrosion resistance or something. Um, but if you were to strip this, it would still be number two. And that speaks to our third varietal of number one versus number two copper, which is if you strip the insulation off the wire, then you need to consider both the surface area and the cleanliness. Take this for example. This stripped copper wire is thick, heavy gauge and perfectly clean, so this is number one clean copper wire. Whereas the same stuff, because it's all corroded and gone kind of gross, this will be number two clean copper wire. These pieces from a TV yoke, for example, they're shiny and beautiful, but they've also got glue and tape and paper, and they're really fine strands. So that's number two clean copper. Same as this bit of angel hair looking stuff that I pulled out of a small transformer. It is way too thin. No matter how clean it is, it's number two. And then these thick windings that came out of a transformer. Well, they would be number one, except they're all dirty and scorched. So 
they're gonna be number two. So if you were unsure what copper number one versus number two was, I hope that helped. Leave it better than you found it, keep doing the thing.